Hey, Ravings and Cravings here, otherwise known as Ruth Hartunian Allenbaugh with this show brought to you by the Wyndham Economic and Community Development folks and foodie people and businesses from all over our listening area and beyond. Today I am going to be doing a highly caffeinated interview because I'm enjoying a snowball and a nitro cold brew from the Flower Girl Bakery and Cafe. So I'm here with owner Michelle Nicholson who's the owner of these places here in Hebron, Connecticut. So good morning and welcome. Good morning. I don't know where to begin. There's just so much. So much backstory. I know, I know. So <laughs> let's let's go to the backstory first. And you were there. Go ahead. Let's do it. <laughs> tell us, I'll, tell so us the backstory. The, story, the quick story with the Flower Girl is that um, it started uh, back in the summer of 2019 mm -hmm. when I decided I wanted to learn how to make sourdough bread. Um, I made a starter from scratch with a couple different King Arthur flowers and um, mm -hmm. some wild Concord grapes and that were in my backyard. Nice. Um, I made a starter. I learned how to make sourdough. I got better at it. I started giving it away to people off my front porch. Um, <laughs> I got better at it again and they wanted to start buying it. So we set up a little front porch bakery. Uh, where people would just order, you know, a loaf of bread and come pick it up when it was ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, COVID hit. Yeah. Everybody got yes. stuck inside. Mm -hmm. No one could get flour. No one could get bread. No one could really do anything else. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the prospect of coming to pick up a warm loaf of bread off of somebody's porch in your town seemed like a really good plan. So we yep. got bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. We outgrew our house immediately. Mm -hmm. we rented a church kitchen. We outgrew that almost as fast, mm -hmm. um, and this amazing couple who had just bought this building that we're sitting in mm -hmm. um, called me and said that they were renovating it, and did I want to put my bakery on the ground floor? Mm -hmm. And I said yes. A couple months after that, the woman who owned the building next door mm -hmm. um, reached out to me and let me know that she had been offered a, a wonderful job opportunity. She was moving to Maine. Do I want to buy the cafe? That's 50 feet from the bakery that I'm building, and I said, of course, <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> and that is how many years encapsulated in like two minutes? So yeah, that is like three and a half. That is, talk about being on the puree, uh, yeah, puree it's button, been a, right? it's been a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> it has been. I, I came across your business when you were selling stuff off your front porch. Now we're here in Hebron. And we should, we should say what, what your address is so people yes, can find Yes, so the bakery and the cafe are located at 12 and 14 Main Street in Hebron. Okay. Right on the main drag. There we go. So there's, a, and if you are not sure, just look for pink doors. The pink doors are definitely our signature mark. There you yep. go. That's it. You didn't have a pink door on your house when you first started, I think my husband you? would have had an issue with that. Yeah. 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 yeah, I just put a pink door on my house. I, you know, maybe he would have been okay. I don't it's know. awesome. I love my pink doors. Well, I got to tell you, I, I have to blame you for something that I have in my kitchen. Because I saw that you had it when I came to first visit you when you were on your front porch. And it is a glass mixing bowl yes. <laughs> for your six quart KitchenAid yes. mixer. Yes, I was like, true. <laughs> I, 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 I lost it after that, and I was like, I'm in the middle of COVID. I deserve this, and mm -hmm. I, I bought it. Yeah. I use it, and I love it. I do. I love it. I mean, we don't use mixers that size anymore, but, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it was a great mixing bowl. <laughs> it was. It was. Well, you have a lot of things going on here, so talk a little bit about your upcoming plans that you're going to be rolling out for the public. Yes, so we are constantly looking for ways to expand and improve. Um, we are uh, so very blessed with the support that we have here in the fact that we are very busy. Mm -hmm. um, and on most of our, at least Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, um, we have a problem where there's not enough seating in our cafe. Um, mm -hmm. It's a small place and you know we can't fit everybody. The building that's behind the bakery, which was originally a garage mm -hmm. of the bakery, mm -hmm. um, has been renovated. There is a, a small space in the bottom of it that we are going to be taking over and filling with um, extended seating for our cafe. Okay, now if I had like a sound machine, there should be a round of applause. Right. <laughs> because I know that I've come here and I've driven, even driven past here and there's like the parking is an issue. There's nowhere to sit. The space is too small. You got hungry people. So you're going to fix that. So we're going to fix that. We've already fixed the parking issue, though it's a little difficult to... Um, <clears throat> 
get the word out on it, but we have a full parking lot in the back. I, yeah, yeah, I think um, people don't know that. They don't know that. So yeah. we're working with the town on trying to help with signage and things because we do have a very high traffic count here. Yes, um, yes we, have, we do. We see an average of 2,000 to 2,500 people in a weekend. Oh my goodness. So we, mm -hmm. we, need, we need places to park people and we do have mm -hmm. the spot. It's just, it's a little harder to find. Um, and that gets us to the back buildings. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're out of seating. So the um, the building that we have decided to call the door yard is um, located right behind the bakery and the cafe mm -hmm. and will have the same menu and the same setup as the cafe because mm -hmm. we, we don't have a new kitchen. Um, but it will at least allow almost double the seating and it will also include table service. So you oh, can just go service. and sit down oh my goodness. and we'll take your order and bring you the food. Oh my goodness. All yeah. right. So talk about your menu. I was like, oh, I, we can't miss that. The what? menu is so great. So <laughs> I, I do, we really pride ourselves on the fact that over the last, you know, eight months we have gotten to a position where um, almost everything that we are serving our products on at our cafe are coming out of our bakery. Wow. Um, with the one exception of the bagels, which we mm -hmm. proudly buy from Bagel One. Mm -hmm. um, best they, bagels The best ever. bagels there are. That's so, a good pick, Michelle. <laughs> they deliver their bagels to us fresh, um, and we are so happy to use them. Mm -hmm. We have no interest in adding bagels to our repertoire over here. Yeah. Um, but all of your paninis, everything comes out on sandwich bread that we're baking here fresh. Um, wow. And I feel like there's not a lot of restaurants that can say that. No, I don't think so either. Um, our breakfast sandwiches come out on a homemade English muffin bread that we make. We don't make our croissants. We import those from France. Mm -hmm. And then we have our bagels that come in from Bagel One. But mm -hmm. everything else we make here. So I think when you're talking about like a sandwich restaurant, mm -hmm. you automatically elevate the level of your product mm -hmm. because we're making the bread fresh. So if you take fresh sliced sourdough mm -hmm. and put it on a panini press with boar's head products, yeah. You have a good thing that comes out on the other side. <laughs> that sounds that sounds good to me. How yep. about some of your sweet things that you have to offer too? You have to talk about. So those. yeah, so we definitely have two sides to our business. Our yeah. cafe is full of our you know our our sandwiches and our breakfasts and our um, soups. Oh, and coffees, then, coffees. And our coffee, our coffee, which we, we also <laughs> adore. Yes. Um, we have a very special coffee company that is from Florida, where we import our coffee from, and. Um, when you go on vacation in Florida, you can also get this coffee down there at oh. the main vacation spot in Florida. Mm. Um, okay. So that is their coffee also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have, um, over in our bakery, we are certainly bread forward, which is unusual, I think, for bakeries. Most mm -hmm. of them are sweet forward. Um, so we, we specialize in sourdough breads, artisan breads. We make every, every mm -hmm. loaf by hand. We mix them by hand. We shape them by wow. hand. Um, there's a lot of love that goes into these Very hands-on. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then we have a full bakery case that changes every week. Um, we specialize in sourdough scones, which if you are one of those people who says that you don't like scones because they're dry and crumbly, mm -hmm. um, you have to try ours. Uh, this is a totally different type of product. We have fantastic cookies, um, and we always try to mix up with different things. This past weekend, we had... Um, a vanilla almond pound cake. We had different types of mm. muffins. We did a um, pecan and brown sugar brioche knot. Um, wow, that and sounds then good. We run um, a weekly special on a product that we call a creme brulee bomb, mm -hmm. which is a Japanese milk bread with a cookie baked onto the top of it, mm. stuffed with a custard. Wow, so like uh, I can come here and I can pick things up. Can, how, how else can people order from you? So they can pre-order. Um, we do do a limited amount of pre-orders for our bakery products only. Okay. So we don't do cakes. We don't do decorating. Okay. Um, however, mm -hmm. if you want, you know, four dozen really good cupcakes, we can do that for mm -hmm. you. Um, we can pre-order brownies, cookies. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot pre-order our bread. It is not reservable on the phone, online, nowhere. The only way uh -huh. to get bread is to be here in person um, because okay. we sell out almost every day. So how do people make these pre-orders? Um, so they can go onto our website. There's a spot for it. And also they can call in. There's a button on our phone system that mm -hmm. will allow them to leave a message. Um, and then our one of our um, bakers and our um, pre-order specialists will get back to them. Got it. Good. So give us the address again before we continue yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. So we're at 12 and 14 Main Street in Hebron. In Hebron. Do you do any GF stuff? 
Um, at this we time? do not, and I'll, and I'll tell you why, but it's such a good question, so I'm glad you asked. Because I know people are going to come in here and yes. say, where's the gluten-free Where's stuff? the gluten-free? So here's the thing. If for a true gluten-free product, you have to have a gluten-free kitchen. Yep. Um, not only do I have not a gluten-free kitchen, but almost every surface of this building is covered in flour. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are truly allergic to flour mm -hmm. and wheat, uh, you honestly shouldn't even be in the building because sure. there's because it's everywhere. It's in the air. However... Most people are gluten intolerant, mm -hmm. not gluten free. Mm -hmm. That's celiac. That's an analogy. Mm -hmm. um, if you are gluten intolerant, you will find that a true sourdough like ours, which contains no yeast mm -hmm. and has a 10 to 12 hour rise time, breaks down the wheat pods in the, um, in the flour mm -hmm. far enough that it is good for gluten sensitive stomachs. Okay. So no, we don't have gluten free. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do have gluten sensitivity. Mm -hmm. We have many, many customers that come to us because they can't eat any other bread. Mm -hmm. so. Well, in your menu, uh, there are some things. I mean, I can order off your menu if I am a gluten free or gluten intolerant person because you have Absolutely. other things. Yes, in our available. cafe, we yeah. in our cafe we have um, individually wrapped gluten free bread and bagels. Mm -hmm. That we that we buy, you know, we keep frozen so that we have them, and we mm -hmm. can, you know, we can toast them up fresh and right. keep them yep. keep them separated. Mm -hmm. um, so any of our products in our cafe can come as a gluten free product. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the vast majority of people are looking for gluten intolerance, mm -hmm. and um, and we really have a great product for that. Mm -hmm. So you do. It's good. <laughs> I remember when you're. I don't know if you still make them, but when you were first on your porch, you were mm -hmm. making. I think they were called. Nutella knots. It's so funny you would bring that up because we are making Nutella knots next week. <laughs> no, yes, yay. And I think I have a gift card in my purse. Perfect. <laughs> I'll have to come back. Woohoo, all right. Well, tell us, what is your business mantra? Like, when you get up every day, what is the thing that keeps you going? We are a very community-focused business. Mm -hmm. um, we spend uh, $0 on advertising as a business. We spend are you kidding? All of our um, you, advertising, you serious? no advertising money. All of our advertising wow. budget goes to local sponsorships. I'm very, I'm shocked. Yeah, no it's... advertising at all. Um, wow. Not anywhere, not Facebook, not anywhere. Um, instead, almost every community organization that comes to us gets something in return, whether mm -hmm. it's a donation, a sponsorship. Um, for auctions, we do a new thing now where we're giving out a $25 gift card and then a backdoor cinnamon roll pass, which allows you to skip our cinnamon roll line. What? Um, which is a very sought after item. Okay, people um, in radio, this is very, you guys should be taking notes out there in radio land because like this is very insider important this information. Is, this is backdoor information yeah. right here. So um, if you happen to be at one of those silent auctions, mm. You can um, you can bid on on our backdoor cinnamon roll pass, which is something that you can only get from charities. Mm -hmm. um, we don't give them away to anyone else for any reason. What a great idea! So our mantra is "Bake the world a better place," yeah. because um, we believe that if you give back to your community, they will support you in return, mm -hmm. and we have found that to be overwhelmingly true. Mm -hmm. so. What a great community they are! They're the best. <laughs> <laughs> what are your dreams for the future then, Michelle? Um, I think in the immediate future, we are excited to open the door yard in the back. Mm -hmm. um, and in April of this year, April, May, in the spring, once the ground thaws, um, the space that's over to the left of the bakery, um, we'll be breaking ground on that spot. Um, huh? We are building a new cafe. And by we, I mean the incredibly talented gentleman who built this building. Um, is building a new uh, a new building over there. It is going to be a new cafe for us. It's going to double our seating. It's going to increase our kitchen size. It's going wow. to increase our storage space. Mm -hmm. It will be a full restaurant. Um, and that will be slated to open probably in spring of 2024. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. We're that excited. Is, that is <laughs> We're excited for that. <laughs> well, <clears throat> for the door yard, for the... That opening, when is that scheduled to? So the door yard, we're looking to be open in the beginning of March, mm -hmm. um, but we are going to be booking um, events in it mm -hmm. sooner, uh, not to, to hold the event, but like we are going to start taking event bookings, like we're already having bookings. Um, our event space back there is a little tricky because we are using it primarily as seating. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be available during our main business hours, mm -hmm. but it will be available after hours and on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. So, um, you know, for people who maybe wanted to do a small business meeting or if you were looking for like a bridal shower on a Sunday afternoon or a baby shower, oh. all of these things mm -hmm. are going to be available to us. We're hoping to offer um, packaged birthday parties also um, for kids. Mm -hmm. um, it's a small space, you know, 30 people, 35 people. Mm -hmm. um, 
but it's something that we need in this town mm -hmm. and um, something we're happy to offer out to nonprofits, you know, without a fee, uh, as long as they are getting their food from us, which of course would be kind of a requirement of being in the building anyway. Yeah, you don't so. bring your food from the outside. For that. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> so I just want to be clear. Uh, I had to ask Michelle this even before we started recording. The word dooryard, it's it's one word, right? It's one word. So the word dooryard is, um, it originated, I believe, in Maine. Mm -hmm. But it is an old, old New England term that mm -hmm. means the yard outside your door. Mm -hmm. um, we picked that name because, first of all, our building owners, all of the people that own our buildings live in Maine. And oh. um, so that was, you know, mm -hmm. a little nod to them. Interesting, yeah. And then... Um, <clears throat> It just, I don't know, it just fit to me. It, it just fit. It was unique. Um, and the tables that we're putting inside the Dooryard restaurant mm -hmm. um, are made from the antique doors from the bakery, which we call the Gale House. The Gale House was the name of this, is the name of this building. It was mm -hmm. built in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. um, and they are the doors that were in this building that were refurbishing and making into tables for the back building. I, I can't wait to see what that looks like. The full history is <laughs> going to be so fun. <laughs> it is. And so another piece of things as far as what you're planning to do is something that has to do with visual things. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So um, we have been working, I think it was maybe just over a year ago that I was approached by a team out of New York to ask me to film a cooking show for them. Mm -hmm. um, and I went down to New York and I did the filming and it came out great, um, but the network and I weren't a very good fit. So we... Um, we decided not to pursue a contract with them, but we did garner the attention of another production team out of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And um, they approached me with a very different type of TV show that mm -hmm. they were looking to promote. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of their first time going off on their own. It was my first time looking at something like this. So mm -hmm. we were a really good fit. Mm -hmm. And we've been filming for a little over a year now, um, trying to get different footage from different things. They went with me to Las Vegas when I went to the World Bread Awards, mm -hmm. um, and we've been collecting footage um, with the hope of having it get picked up by a major TV network in the next couple months. Okay. Yeah. So, fingers crossed. Right? Fingers crossed. I think it would be a, it would certainly be a um, life-altering situation if this was to take place. Yeah, that so, would be pretty big. It would be huge. And it would be great for our business, great for our community, our town, mm -hmm. um, my staff. You know, I would love to be able to tell our story. It's, it's well, a good one. Yeah. And so when, do you know when that will start rolling or where? We don't yet. Um, Not yet. It's, it's very much still in production phase. Uh -huh. okay. um, we want to make sure everything's perfect before we launch it out because we're going to look at large networks so you know we're we don't want to come to them with something that's not finished half-baked exactly <laughs> exactly bad pun right everybody no, it's a good one everybody uses that one right don't they all it's use that one. yes for sure um so no we want to make sure that they that they have a product that we're proud of in front of them to make this decision and we feel that it is it's a fantastic show mm -hmm. um and i think it's a story that's worth being told so not everybody has good stories from COVID, mm -hmm. um, and you know ours is one of them. So it's I think it's a great I think it's a great opportunity. What is it? Does it have a name or title or anything? It is going to be a, we right now our our attempt is going to be having the title be Bake the World a Better Place. Bake the World a Better Place. Yes, which is our which is our company logo, mm -hmm. our slogan. I should say. That's very cool. Yeah. Got a lot of things going on here, Michelle. We do. We've had a lot of things going on. <laughs> I think it was a slow start. You know, we very quietly opened the bakery when we did. Um, we didn't do a grand opening or any advertising for it or anything mm -hmm. like that. We just mm -hmm. kind of flipped the open sign on the door. And um, it's definitely been picking up steam. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of food bloggers that come in now. Um, so, we, you know, we're getting, I think, more attention there. I had some people here on Friday or Saturday who drove from Boston. Oh my. Um, because wow. they had had some of our bread before and they came and mm -hmm. bought, you know, like eight loaves of bread to bring back up to Boston mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. Um, so I feel like we're starting to get more of that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, it's exciting. It's fun to see. I mean, we love watching our products walk out the door. It's, well, it's a great feeling. People who like their food will travel for food. They will. And there's not that many people who do true sourdough, you know, we, true. Yeah. We do a real sourdough. Our breads take days to make. Some mm -hmm. of our some of our breads take multiple days to make. The mm -hmm. um, 
you know, our sourdoughs take two days, but, but the, our brioche that's in our bakery case every mm -hmm. weekend is a four day bake. Yeah, you that's... know, it starts way before the mm -hmm. weekend, mm -hmm. um, which is why we're only open Thursday to Sunday in the bakery because we, we need time to regroup where mm -hmm. those other three days we're not off. We're getting ready for the weekend. So who are all your baking fairies? Who are these, <laughs> who are these people? We have such a great team here. Um, <laughs> we have such a great team here. I, I just recently hired um, a baker's apprentice hmm. who quickly took over my role um, and really is not an apprentice at all. Mm -hmm. um, he is, he's incredibly talented and mm -hmm. he's, um, he, he's, he's doing a lot of what I was doing before. Um, we have, um, you know, great sweet bakers, which is kind of how we designate. We've got bread and sweets front, mm -hmm. front and back, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, one of my bakers actually is, um, she's been with me since she was 15. Um, wow. She started as a dishwasher when we were in the church. Mm -hmm. Um, and she has been just my rock and my right hand man for the whole time that mm -hmm. we've been through this. She'll do anything I need her to do. Mm -hmm. She loves to bake. She loves marketing. She loves taking pictures. So I think she's she must... got herself a good spot here. Well, and I got a feeling she's probably a really happy employee. She is such a happy employee. Because she gets to do all the things she loves. That's yep. what happens, right? She loves being here. And, um, and I give her more and more responsibility all the time. I'm mm -hmm. literally counting down the days until she turns 18 so that she can <laughs> be alone in the kitchen. How many more? <laughs> Not many. Not well, there are a lot of other things coming up and I'm unfortunately going to run out of time. I, I want to give a nod. We're, we're sitting in a space where uh, Michelle has a lot of gifty kind of things, food things that you can come in and buy, make a gift basket with. Uh, and you also have in March coming up the Maple Fest here yeah, in Hebron. Yeah, so Maple Festival comes up in March. It's the weekend of March 18th and 19th. That mm -hmm. is a huge festival. The bakery was not open for it last year. So this will be our first experience <gasps> with Maple Festival open. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. And I expect it to be really crazy mm -hmm. um, and a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Do you know what you're gonna be making it all by for them or not? We yet? definitely have some popular items mm -hmm. that we will continue to have. Um, I, I we will definitely have our maple oat bread, which is very popular. Mm -hmm. um, we will probably do our best to do some maple bacon sticky buns, which is one of our very sought after items. Oh yeah, um, yeah. And um, our bakery case will will be full of you know maple themed mm -hmm. maple themed things, mm -hmm. but. Um, no, I don't know if we have a full menu done for that one yet. <laughs> Something with maple in your coffee? We definitely do maple in our coffee. I think you have that yeah, regularly, right? No, we do a maple latte, um, so that, that yeah. will definitely be there. We usually do a maple chai and a maple nitro. Yeah. 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 Oh, a maple nitro. A maple even. nitro, yeah. So oh. last year for Maple Fest, we did a maple nitro, so it had maple syrup in the bottom of the nitro, and then we did a maple sugar rim on the cup. That's nice. Well, that takes coffee and uh, whole new level drinks. Yeah, yeah. it Touch. looks a little bit like a Guinness, anyways. So, <laughs> yeah, because it's so like dark, and dark everything. and foamy. Yeah, yeah, I love those. Well, I am sitting here with one of those dark and foamy things here in front of me, along with your snowball. Is it a latte? Yeah, the snowball latte is one of my favorites. I don't like the dark coffees as much. Um, it's a new one on our menu this season mm -hmm. with um, vanilla and coconut in it. But okay, we always have. Uh, new flavors of lattes up and up and coming. So, what is your most popular item these days in the bakery or the cafe? Mm, let's go for both. Okay, so in the cafe this time of year, it's usually soups and grilled cheeses because mm -hmm. um, I think people are looking for comfort food. Yeah, yep. Um, but we, you know, we try to run different specials every week. Um, and our chef over there is incredibly imaginative. This past weekend, she ran a... We always try to incorporate our bakery breads into our products. Mm -hmm. So um, she ran a five-seed sourdough with um, turkey and a uh, veggie slaw with homemade green goddess dressing. Mm -hmm. And it just was fabulous. Mm -hmm. So... We love, we love anything where we can incorporate the two businesses mm -hmm. together. At our bakery, it's definitely um, our sourdoughs. Our classic sourdough still remains our number one seller. Mm -hmm. um, I would say quickly followed up by our cranberry honey walnut. Social media, we find you on... The Flower Girl CT. There we go. Guys, you got to just come here and visit. I'm here today. Again, I'm going to recap with Michelle Nicholson, who's the sole owner of the Flower Girl bakery and cafe you can google her you'll find her just drive to main street in hebron michelle thank you so much for being here with me on good company wili